Okay, assignment two for Scary Commerce is different than prior years. In the past, I had you write a Java program, which for some people became an issue. They had a problem writing Java, or other people just download it off the web. And so what we did was I came up with 100 credit card numbers. That's actually 102, by the way. There's 51 valid and 51 not valid. But out of that group of 102, is going to select 50 for each of you randomly. In theory, they should be about 50-50. But since it's random, I can't guarantee that. So you could end up with all truths. So make sure you check each one. Don't say, wow, the first 10 were truths and the next 10 are false. I, I don't know. Okay. Says you'll be given 50 credit card numbers, which you need to determine if they are valid or not. They're randomly chosen from a larger pool of 100. Select true if it's valid, false if it's invalid. Quiz is not timed, but you can only have one submission, just like in all my other classes. Just save your time each time you do it, and then you can go back into it. It will say your time's expired, but don't worry about it. It's not time. Here's exactly what the questions look like. Is the following number valid? Yes, the first one is. Second. Now, is it the same number for you? It's random. Well, I'm just saying on our... This oh, on this assignment. Yes, okay. the first one's true, and the okay. second one's Okay, so false. if it's valid, you select true. If it's invalid, you select false. I actually made this this weekend. I was like, how could they screw this up? <laughs> I don't know. But I mean, valid? In other words, if it's mod 10 comes out to be zero, it's true. Okay? I mean, I was... I, I was trying... There's no, like, blank space for me to write... There's someone's going to screw something up. There's something's going to happen. <laughs> but pretty simple. Um, I am giving you two weeks to do it. Uh, not that you really need no, two weeks, scary. but I, that's what I had on the schedule initially. That's why I didn't change it. But you do have to check 50 of them, so that could take a while. I recommend writing the program to do it. It's very simple. It's actually, you have to download a program off the web, or you do it in Excel. We, did the, we made these in Excel. It's not hard. You know, first number times two, second number times one, third number times two. If sum greater than 9, subtract 9. I mean, it's not that hard. There's even a modulus function in Excel, so it's very simple to do. Okay, uh, it was funny. Roy actually made it for me the first time. Okay. And um, if you know about Roy, Roy likes doing stuff like that. And I told him I was going to do it. He was like, oh, let me do it real quick. But there's something about what Roy does. There's a high percentage of failure in what he does. <laughs> so he gave this to me. So I'm like, all right, you're done. So he gave it to me. I'm looking at it. I'm like, dude, this is the valid number. Why does it say invalid? We had it linking to another area, and he had the wrong cell number. I'm like, dude, you're on the wrong sheet. He said, oh, no wonder. So let me fix it. But we're hoping they're valid this time. He guarantees they are. I don't know. So, but again, I put in 50 valid, 50 invalid. No, 51 of each, because I counted wrong. But it's okay. And then... You're getting a randomness, so you should get approximate numbers. I just don't guarantee that. So, so you could end up with all false or all You could end up with, but you shouldn't. You shouldn't. Okay, and each one of you should get a different set of numbers. But now, when you open the quiz the first time, those numbers will stay with you. So it's not going to change every time. But then you're getting more notifications for all the other classes. That's true. So uh, I can't print them out for you. So I recommend, when you're ready to do it, spend a couple hours. You can literally copy and paste into an online site. I don't care. Just do it. But hopefully after 50 of them, you know how the process works. It would be nice to know how it works, because you will have to do it on the test. You know, again, the test you can put it online, but you know, the whole point is to learn some things. Yes, it's online. I was going to ask if, like, if I made a shell script for it, would I be able to use the yes, shell you would. script for it again? Yes, you would. Okay. I highly encourage people to do that. Uh, way back when, when I was actually teaching a, mo a mobile app development course, we were doing something in computer security. And I said, yeah, if you want to make an iPhone app that solves this problem, you can use it on a test. And one student actually did. So I'm fine with that. Um, but just know how it works, because I might ask you questions, not just if it's valid or not. I might say, what's the number before modding? And then if you didn't do the math, you won't know. Because the websites can tell you true or false, you know, valid or not. So make sure you know how it works. Any questions on how it works of those few of you that were here? 
All right, I think we're good. And you can get out of here and we'll pick up next week. Um, when we cover the SSL, I will have your assignment ready at that point because I have two different things I got to get set up. So. All right, you'll still have plenty of time to do it. It's not like you do it early anyway, so.